Okay, brothers and sisters, now another beautiful scripture in the Old Testament, which was prophetic because it's mentioned in the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. So, uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 45, verses 6 and 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 45, 6 and 7. Now, this was prophetic of the Father speaking about the Son in the book of Hebrews chapter 1. Let's hear what the Father said about the Son. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So the Father is calling Jesus Christ God. And he's saying that his throne is forever and ever. Now, if we go to Hebrews, which... I'm going to mention that next. We're going to, we got this uh, the same scripture in Hebrews to prove that the sun never had a beginning or an end. That'll be next. So right now the Father is calling Jesus Christ God. Yeah. Woo. Praise God. And he's saying, the Father's saying to the Son, your throne is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Now the Father is saying that Jesus loves righteousness and he hates wickedness. Therefore, God, meaning Jesus, thy God, meaning the Father, therefore God, God thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So Jesus Christ's throne is forever and ever sounds like no time frame there to me amen praise Jesus. run a video i didn't know it was on <laughs> we're gonna go to hebrews chapter 1 verse 8 my wife's born again christian praise jesus god gave her to me to pluck me out of the fires of mischief and wickedness <laughs> that i was in i was going down the wrong but we can all relate to that brothers and sisters we all we're peculiar people aren't we amen but the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 8, isn't God good? He takes the foolish things of this world and turns it into wisdom, wise. Hallelujah. We were foolish things of this world, weren't we? Amen. Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 8. We're going to back it up because we're going to prove that the Father is speaking about the Son here. Beautiful scriptures. Beautiful scriptures. We're going to start at verse 6. Now the Father is saying, When he brings in the first begotten into the world, he saith, Let all the angels of God worship him. Sounds like a religion denomination that I know that says Jesus is an angel. But this is interesting. The Father says... Let all the angels of God worship him. Hmm, interesting. And of the angels he saith, meaning the Father says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire, but unto the Son. The Son's no angel, let me tell you that right now. Hallelujah, praise Jesus. But unto the Son the Father says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Jesus Christ is our God. Our Father is our Father, our Heavenly Father. That's why Jesus says, Call no man your Father on earth. Sounds like another denomination calling a man who's not perfect 
was created by by God. They call him Father. Jesus says, Call no man your father here on earth. You have only one father, and he's in heaven. Amen. So Jesus Christ is our God, and his throne is forever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. We got one more in the New Testament to prove the Son always existed. That was Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8, but we started at verse 5 and read up to verse 8. If you want to check it yourself in the scriptures, amen. I'm also a King Jamesers. I got, I'm not going to say anything bad about other Bibles, but this is when I got saved, God opened my eyes to the King James and revealed to me things in the King James. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to go into details about that. Amen. Praise Jesus. <laughs> okay, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, and those who are searching truth, God hath anointed my wife and I to search the deep things of his word. As King David in the Old Testament was a man after God's own heart. And you know why? Because he sought God continually. He wasn't always in God's word. But God was in his mind. God was in his heart. God was in his thoughts. He spoke to God. He'd meditate on God. He needed God through his trials. And that's what my wife and I do. We, we, we seek God continually through his word, through prayer. The wife and I, we like to fast sometimes. Everybody has their ministries and what they have, what they have their strengths and their weaknesses. But the bottom line is seek God through it all. Seek God. He will comfort you and he'll reveal things to you. Amen. Okay, this one's short, but... Sweet as honey. Amen. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, <coughs> and forever. I mean, there you go. No beginning, no end. No time. Not under time. The Father always existed. The Son always existed. And later on, our next study, pre in the beginning, we're going to prove who Jesus Christ was before he was even the Word of God. We're going deep into the Scriptures. Amen. Okay, now we're going to study the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, the Spirit of God, that He always existed before time, before beginning. Amen. Okay, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus our Lord, Amen, Lamb of God, Prince of Peace, Lion of Judah, Hallelujah. We're going to prove that the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, the Spirit of God, all the same, always existed, never had a beginning nor an end, never was under time. The book of Job, Job, the long sufferer, Job, patience, wisdom, Job chapter 33. Job chapter 33, verse 4. The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. Do you know, according to this scripture, the Spirit of God made us? So if He made us, and we're under time. I guess he wasn't under time. Amen. <coughs> Praise Jesus on that. Now we're going to go to Job chapter 26. Verse 13. I'm keeping this on the same video because it's both in the book of Job right next to each other. Job chapter 26. 
verse 13 by his spirit he hath garnished the heavens garnished means decorated you know everything you see the stars the moon the sun the, the constellations all the beauty of the heavens the, the sunset the sunrise the moon shining bright the spirit hath decorated it also means made fair made made goodly decorated wow so God's spirit the comforter the Holy Ghost he hath garnished the heavens his hand hath formed the crooked serpent of course that's another study our subject is the spirit always existed never had a beginning nor an end amen now we're going to go to two new testament scriptures to prove the holy ghost always existed okay brothers and sisters in jesus christ our lord and savior amen we got two new testaments to prove the holy ghost always existed never had a beginning nor an end the book of hebrews the mystery hebrew book who some claim that apostle paul wrote it being inspired by the holy ghost who knows paul was knowledgeable of the hebrews he was a hebrew of hebrews the tribe of benjamin a pharisee so anyways, the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 14. We're going to back it up to verse 13 so we can fall into verse 14. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God Jesus Christ through the eternal spirit that's the key eternal spirit offered himself without spot to god not under time there brothers and sisters amen okay one more to prove that the holy ghost the comforter the spirit of god all the same always existed never had a beginning or an end we're going to go to the gospel of john chapter 15 the gospel of john chapter 15 verses 26 and 27 the words of our lord and savior jesus christ speaking to his disciples but when the comforter is come whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, is a Spirit of truth, is the Spirit of truth, and he proceeds from the Father. And we know the Father is eternal. And the Spirit of Truth, the Comforter, is eternal because he comes from the Father. In verse 27 he says, And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. We understand they're bearing witness that Christ was on the earth. The Son of the living God was on the earth. Hallelujah. But as we can see, the Comforter, he's the Spirit of Truth. He proceeded from the Father. He's a Spirit, and he came from the Father. Always existed, never had a beginning, 
nor an end. Our next study we're going to get into is the subject of in the beginning. Um, we're going to focus on mainly in the beginning was the word. So is the scripture saying that the word had a beginning? If so, then we need to prove who the word was before he was even the word. We know Jesus is the word, came in the flesh. Jesus was the word before he came in the flesh. So who was the word before he was the word? Because the scriptures say that in the beginning was the word. That's going to be our next study, brothers and sisters. We go deep into the scriptures. We'd be led by the Holy Ghost. Amen. He, he searches the deep things of God. For only the Spirit of God understands the things of God. The carnal man, the, the, the fleshly minded man, can't comprehend that because it's foolishness to him. Unless he softens his heart, opens up his heart, and wants to believe. That's our next study. Who the Word was before he even became the Word. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. This is all part of our in the beginning study. Amen. God bless. In Jesus' name.